But I read something the, the other day and they said so often you see someone's life written down and it will say, like for the Queen, it said 1926 to 2022. And in between those two dates, there's a dash. And they said the dash is everything you've done in your life. What would your dash say about you? And I was like, oh gosh, that's something I've never, I've never, again. you know, it just seems like such a simple thing, doesn't it? You're born, you died, but everything else is that dash in the middle. And what does your dash say about you? My name's Dr. Gary Crotez, and I'm a coach, podcaster, and award-winning author of The Idea Mindset, a book about how to figure out what you want and how to get it. The unlock moment is that flash of remarkable clarity when you suddenly know the right path ahead. When I'm in conversation with my coaching clients, these are the breakthroughs that are so profound that they remember vividly where they were, who they were with, what they were thinking when their unlock moment happened. In this podcast, I'll be meeting and learning about people who have accomplished great things or brought about significant change in their life. And you'll be meeting them with me. We'll be finding out what inspired them, how they got through the hard times and what they learned along the way that they can share with you. Thank you for joining me on this podcast to hear all about another Unlock Moment. Hello, dear listener, and welcome to another episode of the Unlock Moment podcast. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Claire Roberts Molloy to the podcast. Based here in the UK, Claire is a potentiality coach, empowering individuals and businesses to identify and achieve their potential. She focuses on working with women over the age of 40 to realize their goals and dreams. As a multi entrepreneur who is passionate about her local community, Claire is a curator of one of the TEDx idea sharing events the founder and chair of Periods Matter, a period poverty charity, a magistrate and a trustee of other women-focused charities and organisations. I'm looking forward to hearing about what drives Claire and the remarkable moments of clarity that helped her to figure out her own path ahead. Claire, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Unlock Moment. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation. So Claire, start off with telling us a little bit about your story. Where did your story start? What were you like when you were growing up? Ah, gosh, when I was growing up, I came from a very working class background. So I was born at the end of the 1970s, just as uh, Margaret Thatcher was coming into power and everything that 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 brought with it. Um, And I was sort of born and raised on a council estate. And that really formed sort of my early years. But as a child, I was, I was incredibly shy. I was um, sort of almost clinically shy, just very, very fearful of everything. But I also was incredibly aware of the things I had and very much aware of the things I didn't have. So I saw that around me as well. Um, uh, and you said in the introduction about what drives me, and I think from a very young age, I felt quite driven by what... I was aware that I didn't have and that others did. So that, that, was, that was sort of partly a driver for me. But yeah, as a child, I was incredibly shy. I, uh, if someone came to my parents' house, even if it was a family member that I, that I didn't see very often, I would hide away, um, whether that was in another room downstairs or I'd hide upstairs, and I wouldn't come down for anything, no matter how much my parents cajoled me to try and come down. I didn't want to do that, um, even if it meant spending hours up there uh, without, without <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, food or drink, I, w- I was that shy. I, w- I would rather endure that that discomfort. And where did that start to change in your journey? When did you start to to find your own sense of self in the, in the way that it, it evolved over time? Yeah, I, I mean, all through school, I, I was I was very uncomfortable speaking out, very uncomfortable being sort of picked out. And being visible, really, I, it was it was just a terrifying thing to me. Obviously, within my own social group, I had my own standing, and and, and that was fine. Um, but all the way growing up into into my later teens, um, and then going through university, I was still very much trying to stay in the background, which is quite difficult because I'm nearly six foot tall, so <laughs> it's quite difficult to stay hidden. Uh, but I did try and sort of shrink myself. But then, 
one Saturday um, while I was at university, I was browsing some bookshops and I came across a book, a book by a lady called Susan Jeffers, and it was called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Um, and I remember just, it, it just spoke to me, just, you know, they say, don't judge a book by the cover, but the cover, it just spoke to me. And, and so I purchased it. I remember going home, back to my student house, locking myself in my room, climbing into bed and devouring the book almost in one sitting. Um, and, and that was a huge sort of unlocking moment for me. That was a huge aha moment because I realized that I had been filled with fear all of my life and I'd allowed it to hold me back. There were so many things I hadn't done, so many things I hadn't gone for, so many opportunities missed up until that point. And it was purely because of fear, fear of being judged, ridiculed, embarrassed, all of these things, that fear had held me back. But the book made me realise that it was okay to be fearful. And where did the fear come from, do you think? Well, I think we're getting quite quite deep there. I think some of that fear came from the fact my father was very, very authoritarian, that he was ex-military and he would rule the house in that way. So we quite fearful because he, of his response, of his reaction, of stepping out of line, all of that. So I think some of that came from him. And also the messages I was told from a very young age is that as a child, you are spoken to, but you do not talk, that you stay quiet unless you are spoken to. So I was given a lot of messages around behaving, not stepping out of line, not sort of raising my head above the parapet. So I think that's, that's where some of that fear that fear came from and it's often i mean you you're a coach as i am as well and it's interesting to observe how experiences from from childhood can last a long way into adulthood actually in ways that you don't necessarily recognize and so i think it's really helpful for my listeners to hear from you you know this this story of something that that might have happened years and years before was impacting impacting you and 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 that became clear through things you're able to do as an adult, you know, reading books, starting to to find your sense of self, starting to find your own clarity. Um, and that can happen in your 20s, it can happen in your 30s, 40s, and and beyond. Um, and that's a really powerful thing. Yeah. And I and I think I'm talking of talking now with a sense of clarity about the situation, but that's something that's come with age and with that, that distance from that situation. Always, I think, as you go through life, you're always discovering these things about yourself. Um, you know, I, people say, do you know yourself? Do you ever fully know yourself? I think it's always a journey of discovery all through your life to understand that full version of yourself and evolve along the way. I agree. And, and, and when I'm talking to people about their unlocked moments, often I hear this, this, this narrative of there are moments when you suddenly figure something out. And at that moment when it becomes clear, it's remarkably clear. So you haven't necessarily gone through a long, involved sort of unpacking, untangling of a situation. There'll also be moments where you're suddenly, no, that's why. And that's okay. And I can move on from that. And I think that's really powerful to talk about sometimes because in the moment when you're feeling stuck in the quagmire and you're feeling kind of overwhelmed by a situation, to realize that sometimes to get out of that situation is about finding the right environment to find that unlocked moment of clarity. It doesn't mean that the things that, that set all of that up have necessarily gone away or disappeared, but you found a clarity that enables you to move forward. Talk to me about Periods Matter, where this charity came from, what your inspiration was to, to found it and how it's developed over time. So... It came about in January 2018, and I came across some news articles at the time, and it was sort of around the time period poverty was just starting to be talked about in, in the media. And I read about a project that had taken place with a group of students, and they'd called it the homeless period. I was reading about it, and it just struck me that I'd never considered it before, that having a period isn't always the most pleasant thing. It's not something that people generally <laughs> relish every month. 
but we have access, most people have access to all the things that they need, whether that be period products, underwear, water, sanitation, all of that. If you were homeless, what would you do? And it just really sort of struck a chord with me. And I remember sitting there at work thinking, what would you do? How would you practically cope day to day with that? And I thought, oh, this is something that I want to get involved. I want to support. I want to help. And as I said, in my head, I just had this phrase, well, you've got the ability, you've got the responsibility. And so I just decided there and then really that I was going to do something. And so we did. And then over time, as people heard more about what we did, we've, we work now with people of all ages from, we always say from puberty right through menopause and even, even beyond in, in some cases, whether that's young people in schools, whether that's someone who is homeless, rough sleeping, sofa surfing in a women's refuge, accessing any other kind of support, we're there to support them. If someone is, is experiencing period poverty, we support them. We're not means tested. We don't take them through all of these questions that make them feel judged. In any way, we're there. To, we're there to support everybody, and and that, and that's what we've done for the past four years now. And it's so important to have that conversation and to have that conversation out in the open because I think that, as you say, you know, it's only quite recently that the concept of period poverty has really been in in the public eye and in the news media in 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 a bigger way, and yet it's been an issue for forever you know it's been an issue for a long long time yeah and i worked to stretch beyond period poverty i mean we've been in a position where we've been part of national research around period poverty and, and around menstruation education um, and all sorts of areas really i mean we were a very small organization we were run by four volunteers and we i think we do we do some amazing impactful work even though there's only four core volunteers of the organization We're looking to start going back into schools now that we can, now that the pandemic is sort of over. Um, Children settle back into school, into the new school year, because those those conversations in school are really, really important. And we don't only speak to girls, we have boys in the room. So we think it's just something that impacts everybody. Without a period, nobody would be here, would they? I mean, just reproduction can take place. And so we involve everyone in those conversations because by talking about it, we raise knowledge, we raise understanding, we remove stigma and life becomes easier for everybody. And, and if people want to find out more about the work you're doing in, in this area, what's the website they can go to? It's www.periodsmatter.co.uk and you can find out everything we do on there and, and follow all of our social media and we update that very regularly. Fantastic. And tell me more about the work you're doing with women over 40. They say life begins at 40, and, and for me, it really, did, it really did feel that way, however cliched that sounds. And I've done so, so many things in the, in the past five years. It's like I've tried to fit a lifetime of things into, in, into the past five years. So I started a charity, founded TEDx Wolverhampton. I completed my first marathon. I got married for the first time, started my MBA. Um, <laughs> just all of these things sort of just condensed into these five years and really took off with one of my businesses and then started my coaching business as well Um, because I looked around other women around me and some of them were just feeling really stuck they were getting to my age their kids were growing up they'd had a career they were just thinking well what's next for me and I saw this in, in my own family and I saw this in, in, in friends and colleagues and, and acquaintances. And there was this whole sense of what next? And I thought, well, again, this is where I come in because this is where I can help people. This is where I can support people to realise it's never too late. It's never too late. For other people around you, their 40th birthday was a moment of feeling stuck. And for you, your 40th birthday was actually a moment where you decided to get unstuck and to go for all this list of things that you really wanted to achieve. Yeah, and I haven't stopped. I don't think I will stop. So for somebody that you're working with, where where you're working with them as a coach, and they're in that situation, so as a woman, you know, who's who's at the age of 40 or recently turned 40, and they're feeling that sense of being stuck, where's a place that you find they can start to begin to unpeel that onion and to begin to find a way to move forward and get unstuck, do you think? I always go back with my clients to 
find out what was it that they really, what they wanted to do? What were those sort of secret passions that they had as a, as, as a child or as a young person? That thing that they, if they didn't do it, if they didn't achieve it, if they didn't follow through with it, what would they really, really, really regret? And then from that point, it's looking at, well, why haven't, why haven't you done it or what's holding you back? And then you get all of these layers of other people's expectations or the expectations of society more widely, but usually it weighs more heavily the expectations of the people around them and all those limiting beliefs that they've developed as, along the way. I really like that. One of the really powerful elements of coaching is that moment when you can help people to find a new perspective. So you say, you know, uh, it can sound a bit morbid to think, you know, if you're at the end of your life, what would you want to look back on and feel positive about kind of question. But actually, it's an incredibly powerful coaching question because it enables you to see the world from a perspective you've never observed before for most people. And as you say, you know, people, people generally have the ability within themselves to find that path forward. They often, when, when they've found those moments of clarity, those unlocked moments, as I like to call them, often it feels like, well, that was so easy in the end. It was so obvious in the end. But of course, it wasn't obvious at the time because if it was easy or obvious, then they wouldn't need people like us, like coaches. And they do. Um, but, it's, but it's a really, really interesting journey to partner with people through because it's such a life-changing event. As you say, you know, that, that moment for your 40th birthday when you had the simple reflection of it's never too late. And with it's never too late, you've then yourself pursued five years of extraordinary challenges and opportunities that, that you might not have done before if you'd never had that single realization. Um, and I think that's an incredibly empowering thing. But I read something the, the other day and they said so often you see someone's life written down and it will say, like for the Queen, it said 1926 to 2022. And in between those two dates, there's a dash. And they said the dash is everything you've done in your life. What would your dash say about you? And I was like, oh, gosh, that's <laughs> something I've never I've never again, you know, it just seems like such a simple thing, doesn't it? You're born, you died, but the, everything else is that dash in the middle. And what does your dash say about you? I love that. So one of the things you've been doing in Wolverhampton is, is to organise this TEDx event, which for people that don't know, TEDx is his organisation affiliated with, with TED, which is about ideas worth spreading. So it, I, I guess it kind of fits in with this idea of helping people to find moments of clarity and, 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 and find inspiration for what they want to do next, that you're bringing people to the stage who are helping them think differently and, and open their minds to things. So how do you get into TEDx and, and what's that journey been like for you? Something I looked at for years, I'd read about it, I'd seen that you could, that you could have local events, there was um, an, you know, a couple of local events in the region. And I watched them from afar, didn't know how or, or, or didn't have lot, you know, lack the confidence to go and get involved with those. And I just watched on the sidelines for years. And I thought what I'd really like to do is have TEDx in Wolverhampton. But I just sat on the, I just sat on the idea for, for two years. So I finally um, filled in, just filled in the application form. I think it took me days to do because I kept doing a bit and then going away and doing a bit. And so this went over so many months. And then one day the email lands in my inbox. You have been granted the license for TEDx Wolverhampton. Brilliant. What now? <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> what do you do now? Um, and so I, I, I met with a friend and colleague over coffee who was very involved in the community and, and, and well known in the community, um, and I and I told her what I'd done, and um, she was a big fan of TED, so she was so excited, and uh, she said, "Let's do this, let's do this." And so the two of us went out, um, and we spread the word, and we recruited a fantastic team, and uh, and we made it happen. And so I wanted to give a different perception of the city and I wanted to highlight all of the fabulous people, 
creativity, ideas, community, and I wanted to encapsulate all that in a really positive event that put Wolverhampton on the map for all the right reasons for once. Um, and we like the you know vast majority of our speakers to be local. We do have people from outside and we've had people from abroad, but we do like the vast majority of them on stage to be local people um, because we want to showcase what talent um, and gifts our local community have and those living locally have. Uh, and just, yeah, just seeing those individuals come with their idea, share the idea with us, develop it into a talk and go out on stage and deliver it. It, it just gives me goosebumps. It, it's just amazing. So they come so shy, so nervous, so worried, and then they go out there and they absolutely smash it. And it's just amazing to accompany them um, and share and witness that journey with them. So I feel very fortunate to do that. And I love how that brings the whole story full circle. Your personal story is one that started off with shyness and you found your own way to deal with the fear and, and find your own confidence. And you've ended up many years later organizing an event that does just that for young people in your local community and enables them to, to unlock their potential as well. So that's incredibly powerful. And I thank you very much for sharing the story. The unlock moment is that flash of remarkable clarity when you suddenly know the right path ahead. For coach, charity founder and TEDx organizer Claire Roberts Malloy, it was the recognition that society makes us feel like we should have got there already. But of course, in reality, it's never too late to find your unlock moment. What an inspiring reflection to finish on. Claire, it's been a delight. Thank you so much for joining me today on the unlock moment. Thank you. This has been The Unlock Moment, a podcast with me, Dr. Gary Crotez. Thank you for listening in. You can find out more about how to figure out what you want and how to get it in my book, The Idea Mindset. Find me on Instagram at Dr. Gary Crotez and subscribe to this podcast to get notified about future episodes. Most listeners to this podcast on Apple and Spotify haven't yet hit the follow button. If there's one thing you can do right now to help me out, then please click the follow button. The more followers I have, the better guests I can attract for you to learn from. Thanks again for listening and join me again soon here on The Unlock Moment.